Hello and thanks for watching. This is a video in a series uh, called How to Fly Fish, Detailed Strategies to Help You Catch and Release More Fish. And what we're going to do is just take uh, some video that we filmed on this uh, tributary of the Coeur d'Alene River and um, go through each of the fish that we caught and um, how we caught them, kind of what we were thinking, reading the water, uh, flies we used, and that kind of thing to, again, hopefully help you catch and release more fish. Before I talk about this first uh, place that we caught a fish, I wanted to let you know um, the way we found this. I usually talk a little bit about that. And um, this is a river that we have fished before. It's fairly um, known to us and fairly local. And so we, we knew about it um, just from local knowledge, but we also had not fished this portion. So we had fished different area of the same tributary. And so we just kind of, you know, looked for an access point, thought we know we've caught fish in other areas, so let's give another area a try. So it's just, you know, trial and error and exploration. And that's part of the fun of fishing, right? Is finding new areas and going out on your own and uh, giving it a shot. This particular fishing trip was in June. It had been cool for June, but it was still, you know, 70 degrees, a little bit of clouds this day. So we were anticipating a, a good hatch of insects. And we didn't get out there right at the beginning of the day. It was probably midday. Um, and again, so we were expecting a, a variety of, of hatches for this time of year, but, but really didn't have, okay, here's a specific hatch that's coming off. We didn't really have a lot of information on, on what was going to be hatching, just kind of general ideas. And then we thought we'd get there and see what's hatching. And sure enough, right when we get there, right away, there's fish rising all throughout um, this area, just, just everywhere out in here. You know, we could see rises all through this. And and to me, when I look at this, they're rising right out of the middle of the stream. And I'm thinking, you know, that doesn't seem like typical cutthroat water. It is fairly deep. It's probably chest deep. It is moving. There's not a lot of structure, um, fish rising. So I'm, I'm kind of thinking maybe small fish, uh, but I wasn't totally sure. If, if I was going to guess where fish might be, a bigger fish, I would say, along these edges um, and down in here. And we did see some fish rise. Um, Lad did go after some of those. I think he did catch a fish over in there. Uh, but this first fish that I went after was on this side. And it's a little hard to tell. I'll show a different picture of it. But right along here, right along this edge, of course, you've got cover um, all along this edge. Really nice cover. And you've got some depth. Um, in here, it is um, probably over my head in that area. And then you can see the current coming down from here. More of the current comes down through this area than does over on the other side. And again, it's not too heavy. So to me, this seemed like kind of the perfect water for bigger fish. And um, I wasn't sure what to use at this point. There were fish rising, so dry flies. And I started with an Adams. And then I think I had a, a little Mayfly emerger as a trailer. So just kind of giving it a shot. And what I had to do was get out close to the edge and I had to cast over my left shoulder. And then just, I worked my way. I actually started down in here and worked my way up casting close to shore. I would start and normally I would, I would start work my way from the outside in, excuse me, from, from this way out but because this was the deepest part i wanted to give this a try first so i just tried it out in here um, and then started working my way closer to the edge where really i kind of expected this to have uh, more fish and um, i did get a strike with a, a cast that was right in here um, floated down and a fish uh, rose and i and i caught a nice little cutthroat uh, right in there with an adams you know dry fly floating line, nine foot five weight, kind of everything else standard. The tippet we used um, for the most of the day, but in this case, it was probably even more important to be at 5X tippet uh, because this was a little slower, glassier water. Fish had a little more time to look at it, even though these are cutthroats. It just seems like it's a good idea 
to use the lightest tippet that you can for the fish uh, size of fish you expect to catch. So we're using 5x tippet here and a fairly long leader, I would say 12 feet or so. He was doing what he typically does, catching fish. Yeah, there's something. Is it a bug or is it a... There we go. Took the Adams. Yeah, nice fish. Awesome take. I don't know if that's the same one we saw before, but as we came up to the river here, we saw some fish rising up above us, which is an awesome sign to see. Tried a couple flies that might work, and sure enough, caught one. Yeah, it's a nice trout. Steve is managing to work the cutthroat closer. This little bit different angle of that same fish, just to get a little better shot of the water coming down, you can see there's just a little heavier current and it's deeper. You can see right here, this is deep, nice good cover right in here for fish. And uh, the fish I actually caught was up around the corner in here, but you get the idea that it's nice and deep along here. The current's running along there. Most of the food's coming along there. Um, so just a great place to fish. And um, certainly you could try this from the other side, but it was actually fairly deep over here. Would have been difficult crossing and waiting. So again, we just, um, just kind of worked our way up, casting upstream here and uh, caught a few fish in this area in a similar fashion. Good fighting fish. Nice trout. I'm going to try and get him around that stick. Come on, fish. Wow. It's good fighting fish. Yes. Yeah, very cool. Popped out. Using the barbless hooks there. That's awesome. Really nice trout. This is a really beautiful cutthroat trout. Great colors on him. This is just upstream from where uh, the last fish we looked at was down in here. You could see this kind of run from, from down below. And it did look really good, even just all the way, you know, clear down there. It did presents some challenges. Um, it was deep in here. I couldn't get in there and wade, at least not comfortably. It was it was too high for me for comfort. You know, kind of a tough to get down in the water. And then um, the, you know, I'm casting a long ways across. The fish and the current were over in here. And, and up above too. You can see it deepens up a little bit. There's a little more current. There's some cover. And, and we did, um, I did see a fish rise. I believe it was there. It might have been down in here. So it presented a challenge. It, it, the best thing probably would have been to cross the river down here, work your way up and cast, you know, walk into here and cast up, do the best you can to, to sneak and hide and get a, a cast in here but um, it was a little difficult to cross and we just didn't do that. So my next option was to try a little bit of an upstream reach cast, cast as far across as I could upstream reach. But the, again, there was challenges. There was different currents as the line is, is lying here. I could have done a better job of holding my rod up higher and my rod tip up higher um, to, you know, keeps a little bit less line on the water. Um, do the, the best reach that I can to give a little more slack. Um, you could mend a little bit, give an upstream mend, which I was doing all of those things um, in the process of trying to reach this fish. Um, and I would cast um, over into this area and my fly was drifting down in here. Um, and it was just it was just difficult to get um, a, a really nice natural drift in there. And I do think that's why uh, this fish either missed or it changed its mind right at the last second. Um, I missed this fish. It, the, the fly was just starting to move a little bit when the fish, I think, went after it um, and uh, missed it. So we didn't catch this fish, but wanted to show you uh, the kind of the difficulties of this section and uh, the approach. 
how we went after it and what might have been really a better option really to cross the river and um, get it from this side. And just to explain an upstream reach cast, it's a little hard um, just with a picture here, um, but you're casting two here. So, and at the last uh, part of the cast, as you throw the line out, you put your rod to the upstream side, which takes this line and puts it upstream uh, of the fly. And then the current brings it down, but it gives you time when there's more current here, um, it gives you time for this line to um, get dragged and before this fly moves where you want it to. So it's got an upstream cast. Most of you probably know what that is, but just in case, um, uh, that is what I'm talking about. Thanks. Dragon. Oh, that was a nice fish. Yeah. Yeah, roe wolf. This section of the river is just upriver from the last fish that was caught. And uh, I love this shot. I mean, it just looks so gorgeous. The river is incredible. You can see uh, the line along here where things deepen up. And, you, you know, depending on how active the fish are and all that kind of stuff, you, you could get fish in this area for sure. But there there wasn't a lot of, of activity and, and um fish rising on their own kind of thing. They were coming up to our dry flies fairly nicely, but not showing us a lot in advance in this area. And, you know, it's just, just beautiful uh, water. Three to four feet deep, nice, steady current. Ladin decided to uh, approach this uh, with a downstream approach. And he started up in here, uh, just walking his way down and um, casting with, uh, you know, quartering across, giving a little bit of uh, slack on the cast, a little bit of a reach cast, so um, it would float down, uh, his fly would float down through here, and he just worked his way out and across this, closer to the bank, starting on this side and working his way. I think he did cast in this um, area a little bit too, uh, but uh, the fish ended up, I believe, coming up right in here. I'm sure there's uh, fish all throughout this. It's just which ones will come up to your fly. Um, but this uh, fly we had switched by this time. The mayfly that we caught him on below wasn't really working all that well. It was okay, but we were still playing around and trying to find something that would work the best. So um, we had put on a royal wolf at this time. Uh, a royal wolf. Sorry if I didn't pronounce that very well. I'm um, at this time about a size 12 and um, that, that's uh, what this uh, next fish went after. We're still using floating line, nine foot five weight fly rods, and uh, a nice long leader with uh, 5X tippet. Why a downstream approach? In this case, it was mostly, I just think that we uh, saw the, you know, we were up here, we kind of came out to this spot and just worked our way down. There are reasons to do downstream approaches in, in certain cases. Sometimes if it's difficult um, to wade, so in here um, it, it was a little bit deeper and hard to wade in the water. It was a longer cast from standing here. I'm not even sure we could stand there, maybe back in here. Um, so it just, in in the wading of this, it, it worked out a little bit better. A lot of times, the main reason you use a downstream cast is just if you're worried about uh, spooking the fish. So if fish are in here and you're here casting, there's a chance that you can spook them by the cast or the line or the landing. So if you have particularly uh, spooky fish that you're concerned about, the downstream ap approach can be uh, very good. So you're landing your line and your flies up in here and the fly comes down ahead of everything else. And so the fish doesn't see anything else except for the fly. Um, and again, that, that really oftentimes is the main reason for a downstream approach. In this case, it was more of just where it was easiest to access and get a good drift um, down to the fish.
Did I break them off? Did I break them off? Shoot! Broke them off. I wanted to show you this one uh, fairly quickly. Uh, we fished this from both sides of the river. We found out we could cross uh, upstream after we had fished this side. But um, it's fairly easy to tell. I think the, the stronger current is along this side, uh, more so down in here. Um, it's deeper on this side. There's more cover on this side along the edge. Um, so this is what we wanted to fish. We weren't sure we could cross and, and probably fish it a little bit easier. So we, we fish from this side first. Ladin catches a nice fish right here. And it, and it does show you why fishing from this side creates a little more difficulties. Um, and, and it would have been fine. He did just lose the fish. It wasn't because of where we were fishing. But uh, because this drops off uh, fairly deeply and steeply, um, it would have been a little difficult to land the fish, although I think we could have managed it, but uh, certainly far easier uh, from the other side. The main advantage to fishing from this side, though, um, is that um, if you're fishing from the other side, you have all this current that you have to get across. Whereas fishing from this side, you can get it fairly close to the edge and um, let it go down along this edge and you don't have to worry about the other current um, distracting the fly and, and uh, keeping it from floating naturally. So kind of advantages to uh, both sides, but I would say typically if I was going to fish this, I would be over here casting across and uh, working it that way. It just gives you a little bit easier um, access, a little bit easier way to fight the fish, and we eventually did do that. Oh my, that's a good fish right out of the chutes. Whoa, Larry, I'm coming. I got a fish. <laughs> How you gonna net that? I was hoping, I was hoping you'd jump down to that 14 <laughs> feet of water. Oh, that's a good fish. Yeah, it is. You might be able to get down here, Ladin, but okay. it, if you miss, you're you're going all the way under. Okay. Shoot! Oh. Ah, darn it. Did he break off? Nope, just lost it. Here's from the other side, and uh, you can see again probably the heaviest current and depth along this side. It's got cover too. I mean, it's just just great place to catch fish. You know, all of this water certainly can hold fish at times, uh, particularly if they're feeding. Uh, but uh, they weren't in uh, like on a particular hatch at this point, so. Uh, most of what we found was along in this area where we would get strikes. We got one from the other side. Larry caught one over here down below. Um, and again, just kind of nice water all through there. Uh, we did also fish this with streamers. And um, I fished right about where Ladin is. And I had two nice takes right in here with a streamer. I would cast it. Um, I worked my way all the way down through, but cast as close to the edge as I could. Uh, let it drift down through here, strip it a couple times, um, and had a couple nice tugs. I broke off a big fish right in here uh, with a stream or two. So enough depth uh, to try that. And uh, other than that, though, both uh, Ladin and Larry in this area were using uh, the dry flies. I believe they were uh, using the uh, Royal Wolf at this time. We pretty much had set on that and were focused on that. Fish on. All right, Larry. Looks like a good one. Uh, I, it might be medium. Good little fighter. Oh, he's gone. That was a decent one, yeah, not bad. This next area that we caught fish really, seemed like kind of the least likely as far as just you know, where before we could see you know deep water lines edges rip you know i think the main reason uh fish were so active in here is that uh, it just happened that at this time we got here and there was um, a blue winged olive hatch that had uh, started larry got up in there first um recognized the blue winged olives put on a blue winged olive dry or an emerger i think maybe both and started trying it and it, you know it it is good water but i think what 
I, I do think most of the fish came from a hole that was down here. I, I guess I really don't know how much fish move up into areas to feed, but it, that is my guess that there's deep holding water down below here. The fish know that the hatch comes off and they probably just move up through here. It's not that far um, to come up in and feed on these uh, blue winged olives. And, you know, there's a nice riffle that starts up in here. Uh, that's probably where the blue winged are, are hatching, uh, maybe all the way down through here. Um, and then, of course, they sit up on the in various different stages, the, the emerging insect, and then the adult will ride the water. And um, the fish were active feeding all uh, along in here, mostly close to the edge uh, in various different spots. So I think there was even some down in here. And, um, you know, we, we searched the water. Uh, throughout and there were some rising uh, closer to us uh, which we also caught um, so probably anywhere from this line over there was uh, fish activity and you can see right here where this first one was um, that Larry caught there's a nice splash right there that's where he hooked his the first fish that we caught in this area and again the main thing that's different about this well one um, it, it's a blue winged olive hatch, so we switched flies. We Larry was uh, recognized it, switched over, caught fish right away. Um, it was cloudy. We we did have an idea that there could be blue wings, so it was something that we did um, kind of have a, a sense that could happen. But again, it was great of him to recognize that. And then you can see he's he's casting fairly. I didn't draw that very well. Fairly straight across, I would say that's kind of straight across uh, the river. Maybe a little bit more is down here, is straight across, and and then working his way down. I think he was casting up above too, but a lot more kind of just straight across, and then letting it flow down a little bit. And again, the fish were active enough. Uh, we had several strikes, and and he uh, picked one up right away. Oh Got my him. gosh, it's huge! That's a great fish, Larry. Wow. I'll help you net that guy. Even though we're close to the freeway here, it's a really beautiful spot and we're catching some great fish. Oh, he is a good one. Yeah, he is. Holy smokes. <laughs> Just hang on, buddy. Hang on, don't go anywhere. I wanted to show you this angle just to because there's a little bit better perspective on uh, the depth of the water so uh, larry had caught his fish um, up here further and fish were rising above this uh, and that he caught his probably about uh, 10 feet above this spot right here but you can see just just right past this line there's a little more depth and of course you've got some help uh, the fish feel more comfortable in just that little added depth as well as some security from the side structure. And um, again, fish were rising all over in here. Uh, fish were rising. You can see this was a particularly good spot um, and just that little added depth um, I think really helped hold fish. I do think there was a fish right back in here and would move out to feed. There were some fish that were out in here too, but but the majority of the um, bites and rises and takes uh, were in the line closer and just where you can see just a little depth um, you still have nice current you know um, and so anyway just wanted to show this perspective because I think you can see just a little bit better uh, the depth of the water where we were fishing and, and we caught uh, fish all throughout this but like I said earlier this isn't as deep as a lot of the holes where we found uh, fish uh, say it's probably a foot or two less deep but um, because of the hatch I think they were willing to come up in this shallower water and feed and um, and still had enough uh, protection for them to feel comfortable and be in there and uh, we were we were able to take advantage of that Larry was attempting to move the large cutthroat toward me as I waited with the net See if he can get his, I know it's hard, get his head up a little bit. <laughs> Where'd he go? Wow, he's <laughs> over here. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, coming, coming to you. Oh, yeah. boy. 
<laughs> That's a monster. Wow. <laughs> what that a fed. Monster. Oh. Boy, I netted this beautiful fish for Larry, and it's just a monster hog cut. Boy. All right, so here are the flies we used. A uh, reminder again, this is June, probably mid to late June, and uh, the Coeur d'Alene River system, tributary. So uh, the, the fly we caught most of the fish on up until the hatch of the blue-winged olives and after the hatch was the royal wolf. And, um, you know, again, it's an attractor pattern. I don't know exactly what, what or why they were keen on this, but they were. Um, the main thing I wanted to show and why I chose this website is because of the tail. Uh, the tail on the one we were using that was uh, effective was a light-colored tail, pretty long, uh, like this one here. So this is really a lot of exactly what the fly looked like. I know the moose tail um, is probably the more standard and there's lots of varieties, but the lighter colored is what we were um, catching them on. And then of course the atoms, you know, just we're, we use the atoms so much. I know most of you are, are used to it, uh, but this was the version uh, that we were using that day, a uh, pretty high writing, Lots of hackle, dry fly, standard, I would say, version, not a parachute version of the Adams, size 12 or 14. And the Royal Wolf was, again, probably size 12 or 14. And then uh, the Blue Winged Olive, the uh, most adult or dry fly version that we caught fish looked a lot like this. Um, you know, again, lots of hackle, full adult, uh, riding on the surface. Um, and uh, did catch a few fish that way. Um, and then also with a fly that looked um, a lot like this, uh, more of an emerger, uh, certainly sitting a lot lower in the water column and a lot of times probably under the surface, um, depending on whether the hackle kept it up or not. So those are the flies we used uh, to catch fish on this day.